The Perineum Sun Club collection is now out. Guys, we broke the world record for group perineum sunning and the club is officially a thing and you can join the club, support the club. If you want to check out this merch, this is a fresh shirt. There's more items. Look at that. And uh, go to shop.chatandjt.com to support the club. Support the movement. Let's legalize natural health. I love the merch. I think it is very stylish and cool, but also hilarious. So I think it's a good combo stuff. I'm really psyched on it. I'm psyched on just the whole perineum sunning movement. And I hope you guys are too. So check it out. Shop.chatandjt.com. We're also on tour. We're going to be in Sacramento on April 3rd. And then San Francisco, Cobb's Comedy Club on April 4th. Two shows. Get your tickets at chatandjt.com. We're also going to be in Fort Worth, Texas the next weekend, uh, April 11th to the 13th, I believe. And then Tempe, Arizona, April 18th. Then we got tons of other dates. If you go to chatandjt.com, you can check those out. Yeah, she has that thing. It's, it's called stiff person syndrome which sounds like uh, yeah that's what not a real sounds like a like a playground insult <laughs> stiff person <laughs> stiff person and that's yeah you're just stiff <laughs> right doctor, i would want a more medical term for that diagnosis like, uh -huh. i'm afraid you have stiff person syndrome is it a nerve thing I'm not quite sure have you noticed and I, I totally believe she has that and you know she's uh yeah but have you noticed that like really famous people seem to come down with stuff more often than mm. normal people and is it just that they get better diagnosis is it that or could it be you're not aware of greg from accounting <laughs> who has this affliction that's what i was gonna mm, say are, are yeah. some people not forthcoming about it mm. or i think just celebrities are in the public eye so when something happens to them you're more aware of it whereas look we're an apartment building we don't know mm -hmm. but even my network of people i feel like they don't have as many mm. or if they do Ailments. it's 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 the cancer it's the bipolar it's more of the mm. the greatest hits. The hit, greatest hits you want some b-side ailments <laughs> a lot of these big celebrities got a lot of b-side ailments mm. where they're like he's got you know two to lose syndrome is that a real thing <laughs> You had me going for a second. I don't want to get that. I, I, well, like, oh, buddy, there's nothing you can do living in LA. Toodaloo. Bieber's got it's a ton of shit. Seems Lyme like. disease. Oh, yeah. I would just feel like that's God being like correcting. He's like, look, so you can talented. have this, but I'm also going to give you Lyme. You know what I mean? I, I think that too. It's God's correction. Thomas Malthus action. Yeah. Helping the pop out. I, you know, I thought about that. I have herpes. Pretty proud of it because that means I've had sex. Yeah. But I was thinking maybe God put. That is evidence that there's so many STDs that God doesn't want us to bone. But mm. then my brain went, that's what they used to say. Uh, about. Yeah. They use that as ugly rhetoric for marginalized groups during mm. a time in America. They're trying when to they shame you. Help. Yeah. I get mm. it. So you can't really think that way. But it did pop in my head. Mm. I get cold sores. So what is a... <laughs> what is I get, a podcast? I get... <laughs> A cold sore is that's the pot. That's like we've transitioned to this new theme where we talk about herpes. I have oral, he has genital. We're trying oh. to get that Valtrex money, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're a sponsor on the pod. We're trying, we genuinely reached yeah. out to our agents. We're like, hey, I think we're kind of the team. For we it. want to be the face of herpes. <laughs> I just want to see the commercials you guys make. That's that'd be, what we want that'd be to the see. best. I know that'd be the best. Our agents are like, it's tough to get big pharma on board. I'm like, uh, have you heard of Travis Kelsey? It's everywhere, yeah, oh, yeah. I think got AIDS. I think it's a no brainer for Valtrex just dm them go around your people i looked i don't think they have a their instagram. social media profile is like zilch yeah really? <laughs> i mean they would have a hilarious instagram but just yeah take the power back yeah maybe i'll may, do you know what maybe may i'll just email them i'll oh, let's go to their website and like look at contact us hmm. what's your dream product to hawk man what would be good i've never thought about what my product would be probably stuff that you use a lot right uh, you know what the pinnacle is like coca-cola but then you're doing yeah. so well yeah i always think about these corporations like pepsi and coke they've been around for so long how, how long have they been around fucking just like 80, i want to say hundreds years. of years but that's not mm -hmm. true but like they're always young and relevant because they piggyback off of whoever the pop star is so mm -hmm. it's like 
when I was growing up was Janet Jackson. So they're almost like vampires just feeding off of the youth and energy. So whoever is young and popular, like Coca Cola's like, yes, hold the can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, label out Lady Gaga, pop your pussy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they just seem <laughs> eternally young, even though they are this vampire corporation. Right. Um, yes, Dua Lipa, hold the can, <laughs> label out. Yeah, and they're almost like the sailboat with all new parts where it's like none of the original people are still there. So no. it's carrying on the, mm -hmm. the energy spirit ethos. Yeah, that's, it's, that's just kind of when you just like think about what, what happens with corporations and all that, they just draft off of the life energy of whoever the young artists and pop stars are. Yeah. And they're getting cashed out like crazy. Like you got Mbappe right there, right? You have the greatest people from every field holding the can. It was Michael Jackson back in the day. There was I mean, no one bigger those, uh, pe the, for Pepsi. Those commercials, the, the I think the 1985 one. Oh, for the Apple? Or where Carl, Carlton does, oh, the, yeah. does the moonwalk? I did that a recreation good. of that video. You did? I won't, yeah. Let's look uh, did, that up. Did you know that Michael and his contract, he's like, I can't be on screen for more, more than, than like a three, second. Three or... second. Yeah, like two or three seconds. That's why he's only on screen for like. Yeah, just when he moonwalks and bumps into him. Yeah. Do uh, he man or Michael Jackson Pepsi? Because they thought, because at that point he felt like they would misrepresent him somehow. Like he needed more control. Yeah. yeah and I think... So this is like a long time ago and I was living in Long Beach. We did a shot for shot remake of the. Wow. <laughs> Dude, that's amazing. This is exactly the way the commercial goes. And then we, <laughs> we just did modern Michael instead of. <laughs> Dude, your kick at the beginning was phenomenal. <laughs> this, you think it's silly? This is exactly the way the commercial was shot with Carlton. Yeah. And then, hold on, wait for it. Freeze frame. Wow. Boom. Wow. Dude, so yeah, yeah, that's it. I, I know you're a big Michael fan. Huge. I uh, I'm a big Michael fan too. Who is it? I grew up watching his music videos. My my babysitter when I <laughs> what's up? Nothing. Keep going. Dude, I, I grew up watching. Yeah, you, shit? you want to talk about the time? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why don't you yeah, sit bro. this MJ conversation out? So Michael Jackson had herpes too. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's why I, I'm wearing the mask all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. So uh, I know you're you, like you you watch his music. Like, oh you yeah. Can I actually, not to be braggy, but I Please won a brag. talent show in fifth grade, moonwalking. Holy shit. Yeah. And it was the first time my brother was like, dude, like chicks are I gotta... asking about you. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Your whole family said that was like when you kind of came out That's as like came a out. performer. Yeah. Okay. The way you framed that, I have questions. Yes. You said I won a talent show, mm. moonwalking. Right. So my question is, did you just come out and just, you went straight to moonwalking? No. I've, there was I, no buildup or did you do a whole dance? So no one knew this about me. I, I learned, I, so my, my babysitter, when I was like eight, you know, showed me all his music videos and I was like, this is awesome. And then uh, fifth grade talent show, I put on Smooth Criminal. No one knew I could dance like this. Yeah. And did you have the outfit? I, yeah, I, I, or did you just I, dress I, like I, this? <laughs> yeah. Like, no, you, I, had, I had the fedora. You're on, you're on the one yard line and you don't even dress up. Like, you have all the moves. You just show up like a surfer. To be honest, I don't remember how. I, I think I had the fedora. You got to have the fedora. And I think I put on Smooth Criminal and then I just moonwalked. And then I just, I don't remember you, the moves. Thank you, good night. But all I could really do is moonwalk and the kick. And the splits. And I did the splits. Oh, I mean, that's and, kind of the holy trinity right yeah, there. Yeah. You and, know, I kind of respect that because I did the whole song and dance. I yeah. had the outfit, the fedora, but you went smooth criminal, which is kind of deep cut. Yeah. Most people go Billie Jean. Mm -hmm. Billie Jean is classic, mm -hmm. especially for performance because there's this build up to it. You're out there. People know the outfit. They know what's coming. They don't know yeah. what you can do yet. Yeah. And then just sonically when that drum beat hits at the beginning mm -hmm. the beat drops yeah you do the fedora on the head and then you're still yeah and then you do this there's a whole the thrust the thrust and then there's the hand here then there's the hand there mm -hmm. there's ele there's layers to it you create the silhouette move create the silhouette move and yeah. then that leg thing with the <sighs> The whip. Yes. And the it's it's all like foreplay leading. Everyone knows the moonwalk is coming. Yeah. But you're wetting their whistle with right. all this mm -hmm. stuff up top. Yeah. You, you just you just started fucking from the, from the job. <laughs> yeah. Well, he was I, young. You there, get... was, there was no foreplay. You just pulled the back of the audience's hair. <laughs> yeah. Stuck your tongue in them <laughs> and started thrusting. <laughs> there was no kissing the pelvis. I, 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 I bend them over and I go straight to doggy. You, you just fucked your school, that's, that's how I am as a performer. I guess so. Yeah. yeah and... You're a raw motherfucker who gets in that ass. <laughs> Dude, I just... <laughs> 
<laughs> go and stretch no well you won percent. so young dumb and almost full of cum <laughs> yeah dude i just busted a fat load on it i i yeah and you know looking back i mean the billy jean though that's it's tough to pull it off or what 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 age did you pull it off i think the first time i did it was because it became a runner it became my thing yeah i would always do I would always do this Billie Jean dance for the talent show that, yeah. that would always coincide with student elections. Yeah. So yeah. then I would win every time because the school would they'd be like, yo, I'm going to vote for Michael Jackson, kid. Yeah. That's Wait, how dumb. Did it never get old or was there never like... Nah, bro. <laughs> Quit downplaying my skills as a Michael J- as Brother, a Billie Jean curious. impersonator. I just know people's taste for novelty. No, it just, it just got better and better. Because you improved as the years went on. Yeah, and yeah, Did yeah. you keep... Bringing more elements into it to like top yourself. And exactly. Stuff. No, I kept it pretty stripped. I kept it pretty. It's about the dance. Okay. Less about the fireworks. MJ unplugged, sort of. MJ unplugged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An acoustic kind of. I'm just wondering if at any point, like when Chris Brown entered the zeitgeist, I was far out of the assembly game when when Chris Brown. So who was MJ's play. peak dance competitor? There did was no he, one did he really, have right? Anyone? At the uh, time, he was at the mountaintop. I mean, Usher came in, Chris Brown came that in. That was late. Those are like, yeah, kind of a generation and a half. Yeah, I guess Usher, Usher was kind of a predecessor, or not, that's before, right? Um, yeah. And you know, 90s was more R&B, like Boys to Men didn't really dance. It was all just about the vocal harmonies. Yeah. There was that, and it was more about the sweater vests and shorts. And yeah, stuff. the swag was different. It wasn't as like uh, athletic. Yeah. It was more like. No one's like, oh, Boys to Men are such good dancers. That's how I kind of express myself. Right. Print, um, boys to Men-ish? Yeah. Prince didn't really dance. No, there's uh, this famous video of James Brown doing this uh, concert, and then he's like, Michael Jackson. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. Michael Jackson. Yeah. And then Michael comes up, and he's just an ultimate showman. You know, he's singing a little bit, he's doing some moves. Yeah. And I then, love yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I love you. And then he whispers in James Brown's ear, and he's like, I, and I, I have Prince is here. Prince is here. And then Prince comes up too. Yeah. And then they hate each other. Yeah. Or I think Prince hated Michael more than Michael hated Prince. Right. Right. I, I watch YouTube videos about this rivalry all the time because I love both of them. Yeah. And Prince is so embarrassed by this moment. He feels like Michael set him up. Oh, totally. Oh, yeah. Because then he starts playing this guitar, but it's out of tune because he can't dance like Michael. But look at that energy he just walked on stage with. Yeah. I mean, no one had better walking technique but i mean you're not gonna win you're not gonna beat michael jackson on stage even though you're i mean prince is amazing if you're playing instruments and stuff yes yeah that's what the thing is because his guitar solo that he did during that uh like uh oh, george harrison yo, amazing um tribute was it's legendary it's like one of the it's most so funny he rips his shirt clips. off and he starts doing like the prince so sexy sexual. thing yeah but this wasn't the crowd to do it for you know no. yeah they're, they're like not into it because <laughs> it was a james yeah 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 yeah, yeah. And, and, oh and, my and, god and then he, they should dude. cut to the audience that's 80 percent dudes right yeah, now pretty much. Yeah. Like, it's a james brown crowd yeah, yeah what is happening and then he tries to like uh, hop on this street light that's not anchored to anything and then he tumbles oh my god look, look at the yeah yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh wow so he was mortified i had no idea this i had only seen the michael part dude they oh, need to no, cut to michael print. jackson right there just smiling yeah exactly Mi- michael was a true machiavellian yeah dude he knew what he was doing Do you he think him. i mean i want to give michael the benefit of the doubt and just think he was being a nice guy i don't know if he was really <laughs> was he like i'm an i'm gonna screw prince <laughs> I don't know. watch this I, I do find that interesting like in terms of his like emotional rainbow was he even capable of hate Michael? No, he loves. He loves the world. Right. And then when he was let's he, he let's was, assume he, he was, was a, a sexual predator. Man. Right. Yeah. Oh, he did buy the Beatles catalog. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. What was his uh he must have known that would upset I mean because Paul McCartney well, called I him. I think the story was Paul was like, Oh, publishing is what's up. Like, yeah, music <laughs> publishing. He's like, Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just, he just, he just filed it away. Thanks, Paul. You know, because I think he was just sort of talking out loud and didn't uh-huh. think that Mike would execute this anecdote. Yeah. He's like, Oh, music publishing. You, you get royalties for music, it's good investment. Like, oh, okay. And then he bought the Beatles catalog. Yeah, yeah. or he did think if he's like, that's good advice from Michael. Maybe one day he'll own his own masters. Yeah. He didn't expect him to. The, mine. <laughs> hey, you kind of fucked me, Michael. <laughs> yeah, that's I, t- like, I told you about publishing. You, you tell your buddy, you're like, dude, you need to get out there and have more sex with women. And then he has sex with, <laughs> with, with your, your wife. wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dude, there was I, a lot of options. I thought a lot about what you said, and then I started fucking your wife. <laughs> dude, that's what you told me to do. Yeah. I, I don't think uh I don't think he was like evil but i do think he's so driven that he would and he knew how to 
manipulate the crowd and i think he would play into rivalry stuff and and it's, he knew how to maintain that mystery yeah it's kind of uh inter like inspiring just as a as a, a fellow artist like i'm putting myself on the same plane as michael jackson but mm -hmm. sometimes you see you see people so talented like michael mm -hmm. one of the, mo the most talented human beings ever and maybe that will ever be and you think that's enough yeah. And then you don't realize, you see these documentaries and stuff, that there's even how much calculation goes with a guy mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Because uh, they weren't giving him everything at the beginning as well. Like, it was hard for him to get on MTV. Yeah. We, th we just think about all the, like, Thriller, all these amazing music videos that they just gave it to him. Black people couldn't get on. And he, uh, he had to get Van Halen to do a guitar solo on Beat It. Because mm -hmm. they weren't putting, he's like, all right, I got to get van halen to do like a rock <laughs> lick yeah to get on mtv mm -hmm. but that is methodical calculation yeah i don't think people realize how much for even the most talented people maybe people do realize but like how uh how much like compromise and how much um like calculation has to go into any level of success yeah like off the wall great album mm -hmm. but very r&b and funk so that wasn't as MTV music video friendly. Yeah, it was like he, because I, 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 I watched the th Thriller doc and it's like he, from that he knew he had, he had the potential to be a successful solo artist, but it was kind of like he's still in that genre of like funk. He was kind of in the Motown. Yeah. And he's like, no, I want to be the king. I'm trying, I'm trying then, to cross over. I got to learn. What do I, what do I do to cross over, man? Yeah, dude. And, uh. I mean, Bad, how long did he work on Bad? For like four years? Well, he was already in with Bad, right? Yeah, but I mean, still, though, like, the, the, to I, keep I, it going. I want to do this joke. Like, Michael Jackson, he always dressed like a, a not tough guy's idea of a tough guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what, you yeah, know yeah, what I mean? Like, for Bad, he's like, yeah. I want to look like a tough guy. You know, I wear like a bunch of leather yeah. and like boots with buckles. Or, or what, like, I want buckles all over my leather. I want loafers. Like a tough guy. Sort of like what a child would think a tough guy looks like. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Because when I was like five and I would go to like the Michael Jackson ride at what I think it was at Universal, I was like, oh, look at all these like hooligans. All right. What's your favorite Michael Jackson era? We'll Me? do we'll do face and then outfit. Okay. Where do you think he should have stopped? 1982, right after the nose got changed. That, I think Thriller Mike is probably that, that, yeah, right here. Right here. Best face. Did you do that second to the left or the top left one? I mean, red jacket right there. I think that's him. Yeah, that's before the nose job. He had uh, a nice nose. I think. Yeah. I think 1985. Stop. Okay, 85. 85. He he was looking pretty fantastic. No, that like it's, there. It's a little far. Maybe Captain EO. Captain oh, EO. Oh, Captain EO's good. But Thriller Mike was pretty good. Thriller Mike was good, yeah. What's he, the best outfit, though? I liked it when he was doing the, the Free Willy song and he would do the draping white shirt with the tank top <laughs> underneath. Really? You like that? That's so, that's so basic. It's like Banana Republic. <laughs> but you know what? It's, it's uh, like this? That is a spiritual leader. That is a religious leader. Look at that. D go back one, This Jake. is so attainable, though. Forgive Anybody my enthusiasm, can do this. but I can't help it. Well, no, but that's, it's universal. You're using mm -hmm. disparaging language. Top, <laughs> top middle. No, no, uh, in the triple Well, you're column. factoring in a wind machine right at this there. point. Well, okay, that, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you left that part out? Plus wind. Plus wind. That. How fun would that be just to do a stand-up show and have your coat flapping like that? Pretty incredible. What about when he started wearing catcher's uh, gear? You know, those knee oh, pads dude, and stuff? I can't even watch it. Really? I can't even watch it, yeah. It's too glittery? It's too much. Oh, yeah. It's too... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, too much shins. A baseball team should have a Michael Jackson day where everybody just dresses like... Like uh, the catcher dresses like that. I'm gonna go with best tour, bad tour. Have you, have you been? Or you just watched it? I watched it. Yeah, my only regret in life is that I never got to see Michael live. I know. It's your only regret. Yeah, it's my only. Do you, do you think, I've killed it everywhere else. <laughs> this is the only area where I I've messed up. Do you think VR will make it a? Oh, that'd be feel, dope. Feel like we but were then, actually there. Probably at a certain point. At a certain point, I dude. Like, do you think it can make it feel like it's for <laughs> it's, real? It's so real yeah. that you're fa you you're fainting with your Oculus. 
<laughs> you're like, Michael. You're cry- you, faint, you, Michael. you faint in your occupation. <laughs> security there to carry you. I always think about that because I would watch concert footage of, of Michael performing in Barcelona and uh-huh. Germany and stuff. Yeah. And he was so big. You forget that 35 year old men are like fainting in a stretcher. <laughs> These aren't 12 year old girls who want Bieber to marry her. Yeah. These are guys with office jobs. <laughs> That's how talented he was. Right. We're like, my God, my God. Ah. <laughs> and they're being carried out. I, I feel like you'd faint. I'd probably faint. Yeah. Have you ever fainted? No. <laughs> I wish I had fainted. It seems. It, it, Dude, sometimes I like I hear about people having a mental breakdown or something, and I go, "That'd be nice." <laughs> You're two together. Kind of. Do you know how hard it is to keep it together, and you're like wound tight, and just to life's hard. Well, so do you feel like the breakdown in the distance, like coming towards you, and you're just able to? I'm push very it good. Away? I can I can bat it off. I can do whatever. I compartmentalize it. Do what I need to do. But it's. You see somebody having a break and then they go to a place for a while. You go, oh, that's a nice that's literal so mental nice vacation. Have a break. That's that's sort of how I think of it. Like, oh, if I just like break down, I can like go, you know, yeah. some passages. I like how that's our answer instead of just taking a vacation. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, that's not it. You kind of got to burn it all down, though, so that it regrew, regrows new. Mm, like a brush fire. It just, yeah. The vegetation comes back exactly. healthier. I can see that. I, I've had a breakdown and it, it sucked and it lingers, but you do feel kind of the weights off you afterwards. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I'm joking, obviously, but there's, there's a, no, I, I didn't think you were being callous. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're good, dude. And don't, don't cancel me. Internet, please. <laughs> no, I, 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 I do think when the anxiety builds up, you're sort of like, yeah, I might just get naked. <laughs> get naked. Yeah. Well, no, that's real. At a Ralph's. Yeah, dude. Sometimes be being transition. bad does take the edge off a little bit for me. Like even just driving in the carpool lane, I'll feel better about my day. Ooh. There's something about getting away with something that kind of gives me a boost. Yeah, I gotta try that then. Carpool? I'll do a U-turn where I'm not supposed to. <laughs> if there's cops not around, the sign is just a suggestion, right? Yeah, that's what they <laughs> in Costa Rica they say. Uh, street lights are like hookers; they're out at night, but no one respects them. <laughs> if my girl's in the car, I always break the rules. Yeah, does she get hot? Like, holy shit, you're not supposed to take a left here. Yeah. I'm like, wait, not here, not here. <laughs> Let me take another you. <laughs> you go, don't tell anybody. You're just doing you know, she and you're just she's doing like circles. So not, not even donuts and burnouts, just you turn after you turn. <laughs> yeah. Look, there's a cop there. I don't give a fuck. You're either going to come or throw up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's my foreplay. Dude, that's actually interesting. Will you look up this phrase? That's connected to hedonism. I think it's eudaimonia. It's a brand new word. That was in your book? I, I wrote it down because I was reading about it yesterday. Oh, that's the spelling is so off. Is it EU? Yeah. <laughs> Yoda magnet. <laughs> yeah, so this is like the other version of happiness because we were talking about happiness last week. So there's hedonism, which is pleasure, feeling good, just partying basically. And then there's I'm mispronouncing it because I've never heard it out loud, but eudaimonic well-being, which is more like self-actualization, meaning, achievement. Like the deeper, the deeper. maybe not as surface level happiness. Yeah. But you never hear anybody, it, it's not as uh, well circulated as hedonism. Well, I think it's harder to get to, whereas hedonism, it, you could do it here and now. It's very quick. It's a quick hit. This seems like... Being a bodybuilder is years of work. I can make a comparison right now. Please. Hedonic, hedonic well-being is my Michael Jackson performance. Eudaimonic well-being is yours. Yo, that's you pretty. Did, you did the build-up. I did, did the, the work. I put the work in. I just released. You just gave people a quick hit. <laughs> I think they're moonwalk. both very valuable. Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. I don't understand. There's a time and place for both. I think hedonism is wonderful, but it's just got to be on. It's got to be the icing on the other guy. Because you can't, or it's it's icing. It can't be all icing. And yeah, he, you're a hedonistic Michael Jackson impersonator, and I'm a eudaimonic, eudaimonic, Aristotelian. But then, in terms of what MJ was, how he was living his life, mm. he was doing some left stuff, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, I'm just saying he, that's on the left. Maximizing enjoyment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just kind of like shooting your legs up with with sleep juice. 
He was doing that, right? <laughs> I didn't watch any of the docs. I that's how it. he would sleep at night. That oh, Conrad Murray oh, would inject right. all this because yeah, yeah, he yeah. had trouble Wild. sleeping and stuff. It's crazy. Is it crazy you get big enough in Hollywood? Just doctors will do anything you want I'll them give to you do. Prestige. They just want free Michael Jackson tickets. They go, "What do you want?" It's yeah. crazy. It's so scary being put under. Yeah. To do that every night. <laughs> <laughs> That's almost a flex. You have weird flexes as you get famous. Like, yeah. I get anesthesi anesthesiology every night. Yeah. That's how I go to bed. <laughs> yeah. Someone's like, I'm a light sleeper. And Michael Jackson's like, you could amputate my arm yeah, and like, I wouldn't wake up. He's like, use my guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have trouble sleeping? <laughs> Conrad's like, what's up, dude? <laughs> yeah, what's up? <laughs> what's up? Yeah, I got a bag here. You want some? Yeah, what do you want? Uh, so your special's on YouTube. Oh, yeah. I just put it out. I saw... And what what's it what's oh, the title for people? It's called House Money. House Money. And it's just on my channel. So I think this is like a second one that I've put on YouTube. The other one's crushing it. I, I looked it up recently. Oh, what hat trick? Mm-hmm. Yeah, hat trick's at like uh half a milli. Half a mil. And you so I, I saw your recent thing too that you had to upload twice. Yeah, so it kinda got bungled just because when you upload on YouTube. Mm -hmm. there's a process to it so Ari Shafir was helping me out because he put his special out on YouTube mm -hmm. and he had a guy at YouTube who was helping him I had a guy at YouTube who's helping me out too he's sort of like a bridge between comedians and best practices for the company because they're excited that comedians are putting their specials out yeah and so I thought I, I did all the things you're supposed to do you know there was a joke in there that me and the director were concerned about because I say the f word uh it rhymes with mm-hmm I'll just, so it's, just, it's, it's hard to even reference the incident without f being flagged on new videos. You know right, what I mean? Right, right, right. So we're like, hey, there's this joke in there. Uh, should we take it out? Should we? Is it okay? They're like, no, it's okay because you're on stage. You're protected by when you're on stage. There's it's okay. Interesting. And then uh, and then Ari also has that word in his special mm -hmm. as well. And it wasn't flagged in any way. Mm -hmm. So we're like, okay, cool. Let's just keep the integrity of the joke. It's fine. We've done everything else. And then also you upload the special 10 days prior. You go live so that it, YouTube does all its checks. So if anything does come up, you would have ample time to like edit a new thing, take it out. You would know if it, anything came up. Passed all the checks. Full monetization. No restrictions whatsoever. Best case scenario. It premieres. I do Rogan. I, I time. This is the second time that I've done this where I I go live. I premiere it kind of when my Rogan episode drops just to ride that momentum. Sure. It's a great slingshot for YouTube specials. So then it's up for a few hours and then it gets hit with limited ads. And then that that kind of sucks because then it's on this trajectory when you look at the analytics and then when limited ads comes on, it just starts tapering off. Mm -hmm. And then we're like, oh, we're scrambling. We're like, what's going on? Blah, blah, blah. And then, yeah, it does, rest it does restrict. It doesn't, it doesn't show you to as many people as if it, if it didn't have limited ads. Because mm -hmm. YouTube's in the business of serving ads up to people. And if they can't serve every ad up to everybody, it, they're not going to show. They're going to favor something that's unrestricted more than restricted. So then we asked a guy at YouTube. He's like, yeah, that word is flagging it. So we're like, oh, so we're scrambling and stuff. And then... Like, can we just edit a version where it's out or just mute that word? And he goes, oh, because I hit, I hit human review on it because I'm like, oh, surely a human will see yeah. the nuance here. And then it was upheld. And then so I'm like, he goes, yeah, if it's been upheld, if something has limited ads and then it's upheld by a human, then it can never have limited ads re removed from it. Oh. Go, what? Why? This is sometimes these tech companies just have blanket rules yeah. that that require nuance when it comes to like uh, comedy or art or something and there's no person there's yeah, no the standards there's no and practices wing. are so removed yes. from the interpersonal you're like well how do i even it's this black box the fact that i'm even talking to someone at youtube is like uh most people don't even have that you know yeah. and he's he just likes stand up it's not even an official title or role for him so he's a he's beholden to the ads group and stuff mm. so then we, we're like okay let's just cut a version without that in there and cut out some other questionable things and make it shorter to try to ride this algorithm. And so it was a kind of a hail Mary. It was a la last ditch effort. So there's two versions now there's the uncut extended version, which is, I think that's like my favorite. Mm -hmm. And then there's just the algorithm play. Mm. 
How, how frustrated were you in the moment when all that was going down? It was down? frustrating because you spend a year, year and a half on the road writing all these jokes. I spent all my own money filming this thing in Nashville. Yeah. So it's your baby. You put a bunch of blood, sweat, and tears into this thing. And then something as trivial as like, oh, yeah, I guess you can't, uh, you can't say that word. Just blows up. Like, I don't need the views. In order. Like, it would be nice. I just wanted to do what it would have done. Like, right. I'm in a good place in comedy and stuff. Yeah. I just did this to hang the art on the wall. Yeah. I've been doing these jokes for the year. I just wanted to put a home for it. Yeah. Um, but it does suck when you kind of get hobbled for no reason or you were told one thing and then another thing happens in practice. Yeah. What do you do to boost your mood after you've had to deal with something like that? Just realize you, you have, you can control what you can control and you can react. You know, I did whatever I could. I, I did a response video. Just some people were wondering like, why is there a second version of this? So I just sort of said my piece as to what's going on. So my story is out there as to why this is going on. And it brings up interesting questions about tech, art, comedy, and all that. Yeah. And that's really all I can do. Yeah. How do you feel overall about like YouTube and all the different social media platforms being able to kind of censor or push things based off language that they prefer or don't like? Yeah. It's tough because it's been good and it's been bad. You know, like I've never been the guy they picked at Netflix, or I've never been the guy they picked at Comedy Central. And there's a lot of comics in that boat who are like super talented, but just don't fit whatever their agenda or picks are. And, and companies like YouTube, Instagram, TikTok have allowed a way for comedians to get in front of people. It. Yeah, like the phone is the TV now. Mm -hmm. So it's been a great way to circumvent traditional Hollywood. So I still love it. But there is this gray area because it is so new that, you know, little things like like Netflix or these companies have nuance because they're artist friendly. Mm -hmm. Whereas YouTube is uh, an unboxing video or old people slipping on ice and then a stand up special you've been spending a year and a half on. So they're v they're vastly different videos and they're not open like they're picking what's on there so they're actually curating it with a bit more intention yes exactly uh these like netflixes and comedy they're more artist friendly whereas youtube is just this black box that you upload videos into mm -hmm. and you can't even get a hold of someone if there's some problem yeah it I, seems like they're completely unreachable unreachable yeah i think it's by design i, I they, they can't they can't it's like all customer service <laughs> for, yeah. for real i i i take my dog to a dog park it's right by youtube uh-huh there's a employee walking by and he's like oh, he's, hey can you tell me why i've been demonetized he, he, he's oh, like, i don't he's know like, what department you work in but he's like, yeah he's like hey i'm a fan i work at youtube i'm like oh hey, uh, what, what do i need to do? pretty much <laughs> I, I was like while well, i have your time and then uh, and they change the algorithm <laughs> yeah, and like yeah. what's good for thumbnails he is no longer you know. a fan yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyone who works there is just a, a fountain of resource. Like, please tell me what best practice. I thought you were going to say it's just one office. Like, yeah. it's not even the YouTube building is just like two hundred square like, feet. It's yeah. like the Wizard of Oz. It's just mm -hmm. some AI face. Yeah, he's, Wait, like, can, he's like, I work in marketing. I'm like, <laughs> well, no, no, no. can we actually go back, Jake? I want to look at what their uh, guidelines are because it's so uh, vague. Use of sexually explicit language or narratives. Use of excessive profanity in the content. Use of heavy profanity or sexually suggestive terms in the content's title, thumbnail, or associated metadata. Use of excessive sexual sounds. This the above isn't the above list isn't complete. It's not, and it's kind of nebulous, and they can just apply a ruling on it, and there's no way to get the stink off of that video. There's no one you could reach. Use of excessive sexual sounds. That's gonna kill. Kevin and also, Ford. that's a judgment. <laughs> that's a judgment call, right? <laughs> yeah excessive heavy those kind of terms make it, it it'd be nice if they were like look if you say fuck 10 times right or also uh it'd be nice if they gave you the opportunity to remedy whatever the ruling is yeah instead of uh, it is what it is i guess we do a little more what about tiktok dude are you guys landing one way or the other in terms of uh, whether it gets banned or not mm -hmm. i think uh yeah, I don't care either way. <laughs> Here's the thing. I'm not thriving on there, so I don't give a shit. Yeah. But but if, if you have 10 billion followers, you're not like, yeah, ban it. Yeah, yeah. No, you'd be like, this is a travesty. This is free speech. Because <laughs> everyone wants to protect their pocketbook. I, uh, well, Jake, uh, I asked Jake what he thought. You, you, you think it's going to get bought out, yeah? Yeah, I think it's definitely already way too big to just get rid of. Like, there's so much yeah. advertising money in it. So many companies make so much money off of it. Even, like, Ticketmaster made a deal with them, and you can sell tickets directly off of it now. Mm. So I think if anything were to happen, a company like Rumble or someone who's U.S.-based would probably buy it. 
kind of sucks because I'm not a huge fan of Rumble's content, but you know, I guess if TikTok stays, then. What, and what's Rumble's reputation? Aren't they kind of? It was like a MAGA kind of uh, yeah, aligned with that, right? Exactly. Yeah, it's very like super right wing, but that's not necessarily why I don't like it. It's just that the content sucks. Like, there's nothing really on it besides talking news heads. I feel um, like a lot of the politicians who are pushing to ban it though would be equally unhappy if it went to Rumble. May, maybe. But I don't know. Can they control the shift of ownership? Like, d does it have to go to a company that they? green light or is it just open commerce yeah i'm sure i'm sure somebody's bought and sold on do it you know who do you want to buy it who do i want uh who would be cool to own tiktok what if it's just pack sun it makes no sense <laughs> that'd, that'd be good for us dude that'd be good for us dude in and out bought tiktok yeah. you know, i would love just weird mergers like that that make no sense just you could tell it was a trust fund kid who just filled in for a day it was yeah. like that'd be cool if, if, if you what if we own tiktok if you look at like the Qatar investment fund or the Saudi investment fund, <laughs> uh -huh. it is that. It is it's, that. It's like Call of Duty, sports teams. <laughs> That's awesome. Like uh, Ralph Lauren. You're just like, yeah, like this was, guy just likes to buy yeah, shit. He it was likes. someone's 17 year old son who was given the reins. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I don't know. I, I, uh, I, I can't look at Twitter now because. Um, X, dude, come on. X, yeah, dude. bro, bro, <laughs> terrible day. Can bro, you, bro? Are do you think you you would be able just to reference Twitter as X with no context? Be like, so I was on X today, uh, has and people anyone, would just accept it as the new. Has anyone done it? No, no yeah. one's bold enough to do. Maybe Elon. For X, formerly Twitter. <laughs> That's what people say. Because he was obsessed with the X as the name yeah, for yeah, like yeah. Uh, a SpaceX, and then his kid's name has a few X's in there. I think. <laughs> And I think when he, he plays tic-tac-toe, he always takes X. He initially wanted PayPal to be called X. Really? And was frustrated that it wasn't. I think he, I heard that he wants Twitter to become, there's like some Chinese company where they, it's like all banking. Yeah, like all encompassing. Basically. Oh, oh, like, oh yeah. A company like the, that does everything pretty much. They like own messaging, everything. Yeah, banking. Wants, yeah. Uh, but I, like I, I respect what he did in terms of like, I think free speech, you know, it, the, like the whole, like we were talking about with like the, the special. The I censor. wouldn't have had that problem on X yeah. if I uploaded my special on X. But but the thing is, now I look at X and it's like all like murder videos. I know. And like fight videos. I'm like, why is this? I'm everything? happy. I'm like, this is free speech. <laughs> and, dude, that's you. <laughs> and I, I like, I barf up my Mendocino farm sandwich. I'm like, <laughs> this is <laughs> free speech. <laughs> this is the price for free speech. <laughs> It, it is it is good he did that like because there was like a bias on there i saw he, that too yeah he, was... he still bans people he'll ban right. people that he doesn't like like when uh people were attacking him and it was undercutting their ad sales yeah he went to his like team and was like ban all these people and they're like but bro your whole thing is that like <laughs> no, no one gets banned and he was like shut the fuck up they called me a like, bitch. you could say whatever you want about anything but just <laughs> not me so you can shit on biden yeah. uh just when it comes to Elon, you, yeah, shut the fuck up. Um, you can be banned forever. <laughs> That's a fire, Elon. So, free speech for everybody. But uh, Elon, you said it. you said that we would let everybody. And you can, up. you can, you can say whatever you want about anything. Just whatever you want. But you're like, what, do you, what do you want to say? Well, I would think we have to let Matt Taibbi post about how you know your deal yeah, with yeah, you Ukraine can, and then, is, and then he's, he's banned. He, he can post it. And then, and then you can never post again. But that goes against like your whole ethos. That this is why people believe in you. Yeah, but you can talk about anything except you know I own the company. So <laughs> that's basically yeah. you, you can open Y. You can have his own company called Y. Um, I can't wait for the documentary that's going to come out ten to fifteen years from now. Just all just the like weirdo inside shit. Inside Tesla or inside SpaceX. Like yeah, he gave me his jizz. <laughs> yeah, you know, he it's nothing the... to me. I have so much jizz, so I just gave it to her. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> You know, I can only raise so many kids on my own. Actually, putting it through a neutral bullet, concentrated <laughs> potency. I run it through, um, yeah, a, a neutral bullet and um, a Vitamix and really, yeah, mix up my sperm. I don't know if you guys saw on, on uh... <laughs> it was me and Joe. We uh, just do a Vitamix and um, so it's kind of like a super baby, you know, it's good at fighting and it's good at math. <laughs> and then Lex Friedman, you know, he, he he put a few drops in there. Dude, you actually, you know what? He talks so slow too. You might be, you're like a better Elon. I'm like right Elon now. and uh, Coke, pretty much. Yeah, you're like. How, how, how about this? Here's an idea. Like he already has so many ideas, but Elon right. and Coke. He's like, are you writing this down? I'm fucking. I'm going off here. I'm Jay Z in the booth. So it, it's a rocket that goes sideways, like a like a plane. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's a, no, it's no, a, ro no. It's a rocket. Multi-directional problem. <laughs> 
What, do you have like a favorite impression you do? I don't do it. Well, it. I just happen to stumble upon this Elon. Like certain voices are in your register. Like I'm not a crazy impressionist. I'll do some characters when I'm on stage if I'm doing. I don't a trust joke. impressionists. Like straight impressionists. Like that are just so good and they're doing them all the time, and that's their bread and butter. I get like mm. a little bit. Uh, it's a great skill. I see that. I'm like, oh, I would. Oh, love it's money in the be. bank. Yeah, Audiences yeah. love it. Mm -hmm. It is. It the makes tough them... part though is. To have the joke match how good the impression is because yeah. sometimes mm -hmm. the impression is just unreal mm -hmm. but but then the the linkage and like the joke isn't there to like match what dunnigan do does a good job of that dunnigan's great i love He's bill maher because the bits are so fun They're like so his funny sliced alone yeah, stuff yeah, he'll yeah. make it about like <laughs> He did a 9-11 and it's like so genius. I, I, I love when, when he, I don't know if he still does it, but when he does takes the live calls and stuff and the stream on YouTube, he's like, because people will send him money to get a yo. He's like, all right, we got another yo. It's like $10. <laughs> people just they say yo and they'll send $10. Like, all right, thanks, Greg and Dallas. We got a yo. We got another yo. <laughs> it, it's just crazy like, what the late stage capitalism we're in. Yeah, yeah. We're just making money. We want to send yo to you on a stream. <laughs> Dude, I saw it firsthand. I, w I was like t 15 years ago. I went into one of the first ever live pornographic streams. Brazzers did Whoa. one with like 10 of their porn stars. Wow. And uh, I was just wailing on myself by myself <laughs> in my wow. room in New York. And I saw guys in the chat room. I was cracking up laughing while I was watching all these people bang. Yeah. Because dudes were in there going, say my name, say my name. And it, I got such a kick out of these. I, I was like, these guys are losers. I'm kind of cool. About this shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was enjoying the show. I'm yeah. not interacting. And I started going, say his name. I started saying, say the other guy's name. Yeah. And then I started being like, say like, it was when Herman Cain was running for president. I was like, say a flat tax will reinvigorate the economy. <laughs> and then I would just watch the porn stars look at this screen and be like, what? <laughs> But yeah, that immediacy. I kind of miss when there was a a gap between audience and performer. Yeah, well, that's that's a, a thing of the past now. Access is the new mystery. Mm. Oh, where'd you hear that? I made that up. Really? But I really do Sounds feel good. that because I think old Hollywood, like Marilyn Monroe, Humphrey Bogart, it was like, who are these celebrities? They're so glamorous. You didn't. You would hunger for a morsel of personal information about yeah, them. Yeah, like what is their couch those, look yes, like? Yes, those days are over. Now you got to be the rock and be like, I'm having pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, ha I'm having a hundred pancakes, guys. Even I eat a lot of pancakes. All right, guys. You know, you have to be... The Rock's my friend. I I, I always I'm, thought it'd be funny for The Rock to do like a live where he's sweating because he always does like post workout. He's yeah. like just put in the work, Bertha right there. That's my elliptical. Just put in the work, but for him to be sweating, like just had sex. <laughs> <laughs> that is I the just, next level. Just took her to Palantine. No, that I'm goes so, that goes against his brand, dude. I'm so I know he doesn't. The he's Rock not is asexual. Yeah, because it's money. He's like a mutual fund. I always think these people get so big. Mm -hmm. Like Kevin Hart, uh, The Rock, they become like a blue chip stock. They're just a mutual fund. You put money in The Rock, you right. get twenty percent every year, no right. matter what he does. And you trust their core values that they won't deviate too much. Into yes, like weird that's. Niche I mean, I had this joke about it too, where like The Rock just can't have an opinion about anything. He's so big at this point, and he makes mm -hmm. so much money for so many people. If they're like The Rock, do you like New York pizza or Chicago deep dish? <laughs> and he's like. Uh, you know, if you're having pizza, it's a, it's a good day. You know, pizza's, pizza's great across the board. All right, no further questions. Like, what the fuck was that? I, um, I almost lost my, my Chicago deep dish audience. You guys got to prep these reporters next. You don't fucking ever come about here. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a curve. You know I don't answer deep dish when this, I'm in Chicago. This guy's trying to end me. I, it, it just, yeah, it does bum me out, though, because the the narrowing of like a human to be a brand mm -hmm. takes away so much of like the art of it. And so I would love it if the rock would be like, Oh man, I worked out today, but I also had a rough day. I shit and I was backed up, but I shit a lot and I got some poop down my legs and then <laughs> to feel better yeah. about myself. I wailed on myself twice. And I'd be like, Whoa. All right. Yeah. The thing <laughs> it doesn't is, have to be exactly he's that. Sweating though, <laughs> still. Yeah, that might not have been the best. That's a down. real brand pivot though. And also the ceiling gets lowered on how much money the rock can generate. I live for mm. the pivot. You live for the, the, that's a, for that, the that's pivot. That's a shirt, dude. That's a shirt if I ever heard one. Like Bobby D. Dylan would do huge pivots. Really? Like he'd, he's like, okay, I'm the acoustic Ele protest song guy. Okay, now I'm going electric. Now I'm not whatever politics you thought mm. I was. Then in the 80s, he went like Christian. Has anyone done a joke like Dylan goes DJ? <laughs> that's his next phase. 
He went electric. That's and, what he should have done. Now he goes turntable. You see him with the wind, and he's like, <laughs> "That's genius!" Because he stopped evolving. Now you go see him in concert, and he's just like kind of hobbled. He can barely. He has to play keyboard. I've read Reddit critic. threads. Just like some people say, what what's like not the greatest concert you've been to? And I I hear it's very. You don't know what you're gonna get with the Dylan. Like he's brilliant, mm -hmm. and he has jams and all that. But there's been stories of like you don't know what you're gonna get. No, he's bad now. You can't tell what song he's playing. Mm. He, he gets but he's all... he's older now, right? Yeah, he just yeah. he's gonna die on stage. But he he'll get through Tangled Up in Blue, and you're like, he's like, oh, it's Tangled Up in Blue, and you're like, I had no idea. <laughs> Dude, no. Uh, Dylan with with the um, foam cannons, just with the drop, just imagine he headlines Coachella. I'm I'm coming up with gems, dude. This yeah. is brilliant. Whoever is running Coachella, get Dylan. To go turntables. <laughs> He's headlining. All of his songs put through a house music revision. However he wants Drops, to. He, he could beats. team up with Cascade. Justice. <laughs> Dylan Francis. Justice. Whoever he wants. Daft Punk reunites. Kygo. Kygo. All. Yeah. It looks like a, it's like a We Are the World of DJs. Mm -hmm. I also did want to do a sketch of that. It's like a reboot of We Are the World. Yeah. And it's just a room with like a hundred DJs <laughs> playing different songs. And it's terrible. <laughs> well, like the first hour, but it's just moving all their fucking equipment in there. Yeah, it's just so loud. And all the roadies and there's all these LED screens and shit. Mm -hmm. It's like, why were they doing the fog in the recording session? Yeah. The power breaker. <laughs> <laughs> Um, dude, I um, one of your clips that I I just watched over and over. It's like from like a year ago, but <laughs> when were you talking about like guys who do dirty talk? Oh yeah, I mean, it's like <laughs> Chogi's like you fucking slut. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, do you remember? I, I yeah, I, yeah. My my girlfriend and I we, we rewatched it like 20 times because i couldn't stop laughing oh i'm totally ah. the opposite oh you're you're all into the dirty i talk? say stuff like that all the time mm. not not depending on For, the person's preferences but i'll try it sure. out uh, it just feels like a uh, a clothing item doesn't fit on me it feels inauthentic something mm -hmm. like like a leather jacket mm -hmm. like i've got to be leather jacket guy or something you know yeah. if yeah. it fits you it fits you but i'm trying to think that joke i think it was <clears throat> i forget what the actual context of it is but it's sort of the guy was like like married people who do that, like yeah, yeah you're like a fucking old slut. Yeah, it's like we're taking the kids out of the lake. This yeah, way. that's what. I, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, I go, yeah, I go, yeah, yeah. I go. This guy isn't the real guy. This is the real guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, they're yeah, yeah. both real. I do that. Yeah, I guess. Are you? Which one? Are you wearing a mask? I think they're both me. I I can do them back to back. Interesting. I can be like you, dirty slut. You like getting fucked, and then I'll be like, oh wait, oh I think the uh, I left. Uh, you can switch hit. You're yeah. like I left the oven on. I'm like I left the oven ah. on. I'll be right back. Yeah, I can. <laughs> oh, go, my, my cake's ready. <laughs> yeah, I can go in and out like that. That's pretty talented. I'm just, like the kids. No yeah. ramp up. Just fucking. <laughs> I just finished the cake. You fucking slut. <laughs> I got a frosted mini wheat, <laughs> but I could never do it. It was funny when I was in like acting classes and stuff, and you'd have to act sex. I could never act sexy on camera mm. or like in a like, scene. My dick had to be out every time for, yeah. me, for me to act sexy. <laughs> like, if we're gonna do this, <laughs> your method, it's gotta be real. Just blur it out in post. This mm -hmm. is just to get me there. I mean, I, but I, but I did get in my head a lot with sex growing up. Like I was a virgin for a long time and had boner problems for a long time. Like I do have intimacy stuff, but for but dirty talk, I feel safe. That's with. easy for you. Yeah, that's harder for me. Yeah. But your dong work good? My dong works okay, yeah. But everyone has an off day, you know? It's oh, hard absolutely. to be killing it. I think that's growth as a guy, too. Because I think when you're younger, you just think you need, you need to have a tuning fork 24-7. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and, you and you don't realize we're, we're all human. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you don't win them all. And it's okay. Mm -hmm. I wonder who that guy is, the guy who got a boner every time. I'm sure he's out there. Good for him. But that, that's an outlier. That's like a LeBron James of boners. Do you correlate that at all with IQ? Do you think the guy who gets a boner every time is either smart, dumb? Where do you think he lands? Interesting. I think definitely not in his head that much. So maybe dumber. Uh, I think or overthinking and analytical and in your head is, is not great for... But then I was Rock thinking, hard. also a smart guy who's super busy, got a lot on his plate. He might need the release more. So mm. his bone is mm, functional bone is getting stiff often because he's like, I got to get this out. Yeah, I bet both of those are, are true. dumb or a Buddhist. That's his pain portal. Yeah. If you practice mindfulness, I think you can get pretty, consistent. pretty hard. Yeah, <laughs> dude, how boring are like enlightened people? <laughs> like you know would you want to be a monk who's just like yeah, at a party yeah what have you been up to just just I'm hanging you know, <laughs> it's Elon for some reason again <laughs> every impression is Elon now 
<laughs> How are you doing? Are you are you feeling good? What have you been up to? Yeah, just rockets, rocket stuff. You know. Yeah. Does that stress you out? Are we doing character? Or are we doing me? I can't. Enlightened tell. You're Elon. enlightened. Enlightened. Oh, yeah. Elon. Um, yeah. Pretty enlightened. You know, when the rockets blow up, it's just kind of a bummer. But when they don't blow up, feel great. When I'm giving jizz, feel good. <laughs> Do you think you're going to be able to get us to like interplanetary <laughs> travel in life? Uh, that, the goal, yes, yeah, yeah. Maybe send some people up there because like this, you can't. There's no return flight, so you're gonna die. Does that bum you out that people aren't gonna make it back? No, I mean it's not me. <laughs> so I'm not going up there. And what if your critics were on those spaceships? Would you work oh, hard? Fantastic. Send them today. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you've got his, you've got his sense of humor. I gotta go slower. It's, uh... No, but I like Oh, you would do that thing where he'd be like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. I do it in the special because like, la like his laugh is like he watched a YouTube tutorial on how to laugh. Like, oh, 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 His first Rogan, he took like 12 second pauses between words. I know. Sometimes and you, between syllables. It's almost a great case study for performance and because I think when we're on stage and stuff, you... Especially when you're younger, you think silence is death and any silence is bad. But when it comes to conveying an idea and orating, is that a thing? That's a word? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's power in silence. It's okay to collect your thoughts. It's okay. And Elon is just that on steroids mm -hmm. when it comes to pregnant pauses. Mm -hmm. And you still are engaged and you still want to hear what he has to say. And I think there are elements of Elon that you could bring to performance and like silence is okay mm. if you are in the middle if you still have a train going mm. if it's silence and you and you need the audience's approval and it's kind of like flop sweat that's not great mm. pause but uh sometimes i'll breathe sometimes i'm talking uh, like i don't have to be a steamroller mm. but that just comes with time and also style yeah style, everyone's style is different no it's true when you think about comics too when they just sit up there or even like Chris Rock, just repeat words. Yeah. He'll emphasize like a, a look. Mm -hmm. And he kind of tells the audience through all of that when to laugh. But also he's built up so much equity as a comedian and mm -hmm. trust. Yeah. And he's been doing it for how many years? He can, you're just captivated. Even when like yeah. Chappelle goes up. Yeah. They could literally say one sentence in like three minutes and people are still... But th that becomes a different thing, though, because now you're an icon and you're a legend. Mm -hmm. uh, so you just have so much carte blanche. I, Chappelle, I could watch him just smoke <laughs> a cig up there for like a set and I'd be like, brilliant. Just for an hour. That would be great if that was like his next Netflix special. Just literally, it's like an hour of just him smoking on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just saying lights buzzwords, up. you know? Yeah. Like it'll just be... Trans Trump. <laughs> and then that's it. It just drops the mic. It's like 30 mil. A brilliant, opaque look but even you, modern America. Even you fake smoking, I was captivated. I was locked in. Yeah. Because I'm like, what's on his mind? He's taking his time. He doesn't need me. He's looking into the distance. Like, I am voy voyeuristically enjoying your process and what you're going to say. Mm -hmm. I know you don't need anything from me. And you've got you've got something you want to share. Mm. I was possessed in the gravity of the situation. Totally. This the situation so far hasn't been solved. This is Elon. Am I talking to you? <laughs> Who am I? Yeah, Elon. Okay. Yeah. So as I see it, there's a problem, and I am addressing that problem. But in new ways whereas before people addressed the problem using the same styles of idea and now thanks to the help of others but mostly through you know the spirit of our of of what we do we're trying to solve the problem mm -hmm. I was locked in, right? If you had a cig to is that, it, oh my god! Dude, yeah, a cig. Elon, Elon with a cig. I mean, he did smoke. He did smoke a blunt. Which, does, any, does anybody have artificial, uh, yeah. artificial intelligence? You, it, I guess yeah. The thing I was trying to do is like they'll say basic shit, but you're like right. Yeah. But with enough pauses mm -hmm. and enough gravitas. Do you think? Do you think 
if you if you just brought that energy on stage elon energy <clears throat> yeah without anybody um in a relationship uh do, do, do you uh eat, eat, eat a pussy <laughs> just elon, elon doing crowd work uh so no she's not my girlfriend she's my friend uh, oh okay so you're in the, you're in the friend zone <laughs> good luck getting out of that <laughs> um, um how long you've been um d dating we're, we're not dating he's just my friend oh, oh okay just 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 friend so uh newsflash he wants to fuck you <laughs> uh, 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 anybody from um uh, out, 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 out of town? <laughs> anybody from n n not here? Yeah, I'm from I'm from a Lancast Lancaster. Lancaster, uh, yeah. This, this, this is what civilization looks like. <laughs> yeah, he's looking at cows out there. Yeah. yeah. Have you sat in a chair before? <laughs> Dude, AI hey, could probably do that. Oh yeah, I'm sure. We could probably scramble up some uh, just Elon stand up set. Yeah, Stephen Hawking ripping it crowd work. Is that going to be our future instead of a TV? We just like get home and we just say like, AI, load me up, Elon doing stand-up comedy. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. You can just pick a voice and I'll do it. Yeah. We, should do, <laughs> we should do the calls. Yeah, let's hop on. Hello? Hey, man, how's it going? Dude, what's going on? Just hanging here, man. Chad, Fahim Anwar. What's up, man? Hell yeah. What's going on, guys? Dude, just hanging. I'm so freaking fired up right now that you guys called me. I'm fired up you answered. And for you guys, anything. Thanks, dude. I like how fired up he is. Yeah. I think we're all fired up. Dude, I've I'm been looking fired forward up. to this. I was texting Jake earlier today, and I was like, dude, there's no way. I was just about to step a foot in the house, and I was like, right back in the car. So fired up to hear, to hear you guys. Well, what are you fired up to talk about? Dude. Great question. So, a couple weeks ago, I went to this uh, outdoor hockey game. It was the Devils Ranger Stadium Series at MetLife, like where the Jets and Giants play. I'm with all my boys, and I'm super fired up. You know, we're ripping JBs. We're tailgating a hockey game, which you don't normally get to do. So, ripping Jaeger bombs and just making burgers, having fun. I'm having a blast. Next thing I know, I take one step into the arena and a guy in a flyer, sorry, did I say Devil's Rangers before I meant to say Devil's Flyers? A Flyers fan in one of those like ski masks, he looks at me and goes, I'm going to fuck your girlfriend. <sighs> Dude, right? Yeah. And I tried to be all cool about it, so I go, Dude, what the fuck did you just say? Mm -hmm. And then I I didn't think about anything past that. So I got in his face thinking I was all cool. Mm. And then he's like, what are you going to do about it? And I was like, nothing. Like, I paid so much to get into this arena. I just had one step in here. What do you think I'm going to try to sock you and, and I'm, I'm out? So I couldn't even think of something clever to say. I was just so rattled. Mm -hmm. And then... My girl pulled me away, and, and that was it. And I was all the whole night. I was like, I should have said this. I should have said that. And I'm like, I could have hit some low blows, but of course you don't think of the best thing to say until you walk away. And uh, yeah, I was just wondering, like, what would you guys? How how should I handle that situation? I I totally got rattled, and like, his goal was accomplished. He had real estate in my head. I mean, I'm talking about it two weeks later, like. He won, dude. Freaking mm. sucks. I mean, I feel like you hit him with some pretty sound logic, though. It seems like you didn't do the right thing in your head, but all those, all, whatever you listed right there, checks out to me. You spent so much money on that, and this, if you scrapped with him, it would have ruined the whole night. There could have been legal stuff as well. It's mm -hmm. totally not worth yeah. it. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, but like, that doesn't really zing him. You think he's still thinking about, like, man, that dude really didn't do anything. Like, ah, oh, you know, it's like I didn't even get him. Well, you stepped to him the appropriate amount. You didn't let him go by unchecked. And had you, look, we still got to move on, live, and be happy. But you did say, what the fuck, and kind of put him back into saying something. I think next time you say, how are you going to do it? Mm -hmm. 
discombobulate him and really make him go into detail on how he plans to fuck her because i'm betting dollars to donuts he doesn't have a plan mm. and he just means it as an empty threat to get you on your heels but if you really make him go into detail about how he would pursue your girlfriend and seduce her i'm betting his plan is weak and he comes up wanting and he'll reveal himself to be sexually inadequate mm. <laughs> dude so like I should walk around with like a notepad and paper and it's like and, and pen and it's like anytime someone steps to me like that it's like all right dude I'm taking notes. Yeah and then and then and then he'll be like oh and then at this point you know I'd probably uh, play with her perky nipples and you go ah, actually she's sensitive there she doesn't like it. Mm. And you just mm. stare at him and say what next chief? Because so far she's my dad not almost wet. said something kind of similar. He was like I said the same thing and he said you should have just turned around and said. You got good taste and walk Ooh, away. And like, that's pretty Dude, good. I think that's right, but you don't think about it until you leave. It's like you dream about this situation where someone presses you and it's like, oh, I'm going to be the hero. I'm going to be the hero. And then it happens and you freeze. Like, dude, it sucks. Yeah, there's, there's spirit snipers just walking around the world who when they see you happy, the only thing they can do to feel equal is to take away your comfort and safety. And it's unfortunate, but they'll always be there. So I don't want you to be too on guard where you're not enjoying the moment, but you got to be ready for the chaos when it shows up at your door. Hmm. I appreciate that. And it makes sense that the spirit sniper was in the shape of a Flyers fan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, he's from Philly. He's a piece of shit. Also remember, you, yeah, it'll happen. you got spirit jumped pretty much. You're mm -hmm. a victim here. Yeah. Right? right. Yeah. So it's like, you're feeling bad about getting jumped. Yeah. And I think whenever, especially Philly guys try to step to you, weird them out. Be like, oh, we've been looking for a third. Um, you want to hit the bathroom right now? We could do it in the porta potty right now, and uh, see if he's down. You try to, he tries to fuck your girlfriend. You try to fuck him, literally. That is one hundred percent what to do. Yeah, put it in his That's ass. Awesome. He was wearing a ski mask. You said. Yeah, right. Like it's like he's hiding his identity, so you could just say that to anybody. Dude. Oh, he's wearing a Yeah, <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't pick up on that? Oh, so yeah. no part of his face was identifiable? Just the lips and the eyes, brother. I guess that's all you need based on your advice. Bro, don't sweat this guy. He's straight <laughs> coward. If yeah. it really came down to the gangbang, he wouldn't even be able to make eye contact with you while he thrusted. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You know what? And I, and I do want to pull back on the Philly comment because your previous caller with the boy bonding... Man, I gotta give it up to that guy. That, I might make it out to the Philly show just to see that guy. Dude, that's mm -hmm. a good show. Way to be magnanimous. There's some good Philly folk out there, and you know they're not the type to just uh, try to assault people. Uh, I'm gonna create a catchphrase here. Though. I'm gonna get uh, when in doubt, weird them out. Anyone Dude. tries to step to you, weird them out. Especially to, I mean, like this guy's miserable. If he's gonna go around saying stuff like that, obviously. He's not happy with himself. And he's wearing a ski mask. Be like, dude, yeah. easy entry. That's like internet troll live in concert. A ski yeah. mask. Right? Yeah, dude. Right? Good call. He literally wears a mask. He's scared of being seen. Yeah, dude. Let yeah, him know you deal. see him and that you will take what's safe from him. Yeah. I've seen your lips. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I see how chap they are. Good luck hiding in the stadium. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> That's awesome. You're a beast, man. And uh, I mean, the guy's clearly jealous that you got a smoke show girlfriend and you handle it with ease. So just keep living your life and, you know, just be on the lookout when you're anywhere near Philadelphians. Dude, I appreciate that. I've been chalking this one up in my mind for like a couple of weeks. I was like, dude, I should have done this. I should have done that. And dude, when in doubt, weird him out. Mm -hmm. I might have to get that tatted or something. On your ass, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. On your ass. I'll get it tied with you. If you do it, if you do it, well, well, let's do it together. And we'll get a portrait of uh, Ass Clown next to it. Oh, yeah. big Dude. time homage. He's my buddy. He's a wild card, but he sells software also. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. Can I shout out my boys real quick? I told them all I was coming on the pod. They were so fired up for me. Run Hell through yeah. the list, man. Hope it's long. <laughs> oh, dude. Strap in. We got Ed. Chris, Liam, Mike, Dan, Matt. Yeah, dude. A lot of exciting names. Yeah, not really. 
I, you guys always have the sick nicknames. I don't have any ass clowns in my crew. You know, I was, I was, I wanted to joke about this though. Like, it is the guys with the normal names who are actually the wild cards. Every time I've met someone's friend, they're like, "This is Dirty Dave the Devil." <laughs> He's like the most normal guy. He's just reading a book or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm Dave. He's like, I'm a history fan. Yeah, I'm Dave. Mostly yeah. pre-industrial revolution stuff. <laughs> Dirty talk, Fahim. Yeah. <laughs> What's your name, brother? That's all. I'm Freddie. Freddie. Dude, I meet. I met you guys. Well, I met Chad at the Brooklyn show. I came up after. Oh. I was, dude. I was on one that night, and I was just nice. so freaking fired up. I totally think I barged in your conversation. I was like, "What up?" You're like, "Yo, this is Kennedy." I was like, "I know." I think I remember like, you. Yeah, I like, I, yeah, dude. I feel like I know you guys. And it's like, <clears throat> what up? I'm Freddie. You're a legend. Later, Fred. Love you, brother. I appreciate that, guys. I love you, boys. Love I'll you, too. Later, man. Good, Good advice you, got, you gave, I think. Good guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was phenomenal. <laughs> I think that's going to become a thing. And it's real. That's the real deal holy field of it. Mike Tyson does that, and he doesn't even need to. What? Where he's like, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fuck you until you love me. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And you can just feel you know, the terror in the room. He said Allah Akbar after that. And we're like, well, we don't know if we need that PR. And he's like, <laughs> I'm going to fuck you on the ad, make you love me. Allah, Allah Akbar. Like, Did you okay. really? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm going to eat your children. <laughs> oh, he answered. Hello? Hello. Hey, man. How's it going? <laughs> Yo, what's up? What up, brother? You got Chad, JT, and Fahim Anwar on the line. And Jake. Oh, no way. Can you hop oh, off yeah. speaker, brother? Oh, yeah. What's going on? Hanging, dude. What's going on with you? You want to tell us what ails you? Yeah, so uh, short story long, my girlfriend and I bought a house. And uh, about a month living here, she tells me she doesn't want anyone boning in the house. What? <laughs> Does that include you? Besides us. Besides us. You. Yeah. That was scary. That'd be weird. That'd be a weird rule. How are your boys handling that? <laughs> um, I mean, I've told a few of them, and they're just like, why? And I'm kind of in the same, same boat. I'm like, why? Has she uh, spoken at all as to why? Uh, she says it's a respect thing since we own the house. And I'm like, I mean, well, we've boned in other people's houses, so what's the problem? Did you have someone bone in there? No, that's the thing. How horny are the homies, and are they going to be able to handle the ban? Uh, I mean, pretty much all of our friends are in, like, serious relationships or married, so, like, I don't think they would do anything disrespectful. Shit. Right. You think it'll be straight mish sex with heavy eye contact and ma like basic cleanup afterwards? Yeah. I mean, I'd hope so. Yeah. Maybe that's what it is then, brother. You just got to find compromise. You got to just tell her that the sex won't get too wild. No one's going to knock over lamps. There won't be fluid anywhere that can't get cleaned up and that everybody will, you know, wear a condom or be prepared to have a child if something does, you know, come of it. Yeah, that's that's my thing. I want to have a safe space for my friends mm -hmm. to crash. And if they decide to burn, then you're in the right place. I think it's a basic human right. I mean, every human being has the right to food, um, medical care, and shelter, especially when they're about to clap cheeks. That's... That's a good point. Yeah, because also, does she want people coming over to stay who are clearly horned up, who then have to go outside to bone? Where do you live? Does it rain? I live in Virginia. It, it rains. It does rain. It's humid, too, outside. You need AC. If, like, the friends are boning outside. Like, look, look it's raining. we got to let them in. This is unhuman. What? All right, guys, you can come in and bone in the guest room. You're going to get pneumonia. <laughs> He's just in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, we do have, like, a pretty big detached garage. So, like, <laughs> she's pretty much named that the drill factory. 
Oh. So that's allowed then? So she's even sectioned off where you're allowed to crank? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to go out to the shed. <laughs> <laughs> and you pay half on the house and half on the rent? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I got to pay for the whole drill factory, but... Is she allowed to do her thing wherever she wants? I mean, I guess that's what she's been doing. I've never seen her go out to the to the garage. So, rules for thee, not for me. Sounds like mm. she voted for Gavin Newsom. Mm. So also, yeah. check this Sorry. out. We were visiting my little brother in Baltimore, and we were crashing at his townhouse. <laughs> And he walked in on us, nice. drilling. Awesome. And he says that's different because he doesn't own the townhouse, but we own this house. <laughs> that sounds elitist. <laughs> Wait, so... But now, but now, said little brother, shout out to Evan, my little brother. He listens to the pod, but he's talking about moving in with us. Ooh, whoa. Have you brought this up with her? Can he bone in your house? Uh, if he lives there. I have. And I said, yes. I mean, if you're living here, you know, you're paying the rent. You're welcome to it. And but, where does she land on that? She lands uh, no randos. A family can bone. But it can't, but it has to be like in a monogamous relationship. You can't uh, bring no home randos, life. gotcha. Right, right, yeah. Your but, wife yeah. has a lot of rules. <laughs> that's like that's like the only rule that's in the house. Did she come from like a puritanical family that was like very uh, prude about sex? No, I wouldn't say so. I mean, her mom had her when her mom was sixteen. So, so is it an overcorrection then? Everyone looked at them like heathens, so she wants to keep the sex safe and polite. I mean, yeah, I could see that. I mean, I, I respect her boundaries and her decisions, but we just don't see eye to eye on this. Have you had any instances yet where you've had some buddies over and they were about to enter coitus and you had to tell them to take it outside? Not yet, but... Um, may happen. We, we just moved in in uh, December. Have you ever like walked in on one of your buddies who's just like, almost like how someone smokes right outside the door, just cranking half, <laughs> half in the house, half outside? Uh, not yet, but hopefully they'll go to the... Because you're not going to eliminate garage. sin. You're just going to move where it happens and people are lazy. So I could right. see you having like a bust corner. <laughs> A buzz zone? <laughs> I'm curious, how do you implement or how do you cross this bridge with your friends? How, how, like, mm -hmm. how are the guests aware of this? Do you have to have a weird conversation? Do you have a sign in the room? Yeah, no sex in here. Yeah. Well, that, that was my thing, too. I was like, are we just going to greet him at the front door and be like, listen, no boning? I think or... it's a sign. <laughs> how big is the sign? And where do you put it? It's about four feet long and it's over each bed in the house. Is do they use lights? Is it like a flashing like I was thinking like it was carved sign? in wood oh. because she feels traditional. Uh, like to a me. homey feel, kinda mm -hmm. like a live, love, laugh. But, exactly. But no boning in exactly. cursive. Like a Madewell kind of tchotchke that shows I get up it. on the wall. Or maybe it's a coffee mug and that's the one that you get in the mornings. Is no yeah. boning. Morning, no boning. Have you and your I, mean, I, could, I could bring that up too. Just so we can implement implement the rule, but I mean, this could be a trade off. What if you say, okay, but you have to let them know somehow because I that's a weird conversation for me. But if it means this much to you, mm -hmm. would you go for that? We have we have told a couple of her friends and a couple of my friends, and I'm kind of, I'm I like tell like she you know walks off to go to the bathroom. I'll just be like, hey. <laughs> Just like text me and like I'll let you know when she's not home and you know. Right. It's like an out. underground uh <laughs> railroad of bone. <laughs> mm. I, I don't want to yeah. cross the line. Does she let you have sex with her non missionary? Oh, yeah. 
Mm. It's pretty cool. <laughs> That's sick. Yeah. Um, I mean, you like that? Was, it, was that question directed towards me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I do. It's, it's very, I thank her every time. Nice. Well, you know, you won't have to clean that many sheets, I guess. I didn't think about that. It's true. <laughs> the one thing she is missing out on, though, is horniness osmosis. I know whenever I go visit friends and stay at their house that they have sex more often when I'm there. Mm. You inspire? I just bring a, uh, an anxiety mm -hmm. that needs to be relieved. Mm. My dad's the same. Mm. Mm. Whenever my dad's around. You get horned up? <laughs> yeah. Mm. That's true. Uh -huh. That's good. I don't judge it. Um, well, what's, what's his name? Beef? What was that? What's your name? Oh, what's my name? Wes. You're a little, yeah, a little off. That makes more sense <laughs> than beef. <laughs> well, good luck. Wes, you're the man, dude. Love you, doggy. Good luck out there. Keep uh, us posted for real. Yeah. If you make a sign, show us the sign. All right. I'll send in the pic. Oh, we want to see a, a photo of the drill factory. Not you in there, but just like, you know, we want to see where you're doing your thing. Yeah. I'd love to see where you beat off. <laughs> okay. It's, uh, yeah, it's got like a gravel floor. It's pretty nice. It's <laughs> pretty sick. <laughs> no cleanup. It just goes in the gravel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This goes out to all the listeners. Just send us a picture of your bone zone. Just wherever you drill. We'll show it on the pod. See what your setup is. Modern celebrity. What? What is it? Lack of mystery. We want to see how you live. Yeah. We'll make it like a Marie Kondo show. The Rock would never. <laughs> yeah. You can give notes. The Rock's like, this is where I beat off. Yeah. <laughs> the magic power of beating off. All right, Wes. Where, well, thanks. Thanks for the advice, y'all. Of course, man. Good luck out there. Just a lot of good guys. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good friend. He wants his, even though with these rules, he's he's bending them a little bit. He's acting yeah. as a lookout for Bonin. Dude, I mean, I really like that he told his friends. He's like, when she's not here, you can. Yeah. Is he? T but now it's like a heist job. Like she's pulling up. She's pulling yeah. up. <laughs> guys, get out of there! Yeah. Like it's Mission Impossible. They do the entrapment thing where they're just going <laughs> through the lasers. Oh. <laughs> you guys gotta shower up. <laughs> you gotta shower up. You guys reek. You, you reek of it. Smell it on you. I'll, she I'll, opens the door. Yeah. Oh. I'll intercept her for a second. Hey, babe, how's work? <laughs> Why can't we go inside? <laughs> we never talk about the bushes. Someone smells freshly fucked in here. <laughs> Who's been fucking? Beef has been here, hasn't he? I wonder, does she get a sexual kick out of restricting other people from having sex? The, the two most interesting parts to me were one, she cares to stop other people. Mm. And then the second one was the homeowner thing. Yeah, that was interesting. Like, he rents. <laughs> when you own, you're allowed to have these rules. When you own, you can bone. Is that one of the perks of being a homeowner? Like, if you rent, just anybody can fuck in any room and you have no say over it? That's, I'm going to tell my kids that when they're like, when can I have sex? I'll say. When you own a house. When you own a house. Yeah. It's Do not you, bad advice. That'd be funny if, you know, the brother walks in on them while they're fucking... And he's like, what the fuck? And she's like, you rent. And just like keeps on writing the guy. <laughs> Don't act like you own this. I also love that she comes home, the brother's having sex with a rando. And she's like, no, stop. And then he throws down the deed to the house. <laughs> Read it and weep. Read it and weep. I just bought this. How are you doing on time? I'm all right. I got nothing, dude. That's, how do you feel when you got a wide open dance card for the day? pretty good it's a, i don't mind it well if i don't like it if it's every day but it's nice to have one oasis just uh cool i could catch up on stuff i could do some writing i have a show later tonight but that's a that's at night where, where are you, you performing at? at a comedy store nice original room what's your favorite room original room that's like the medium-sized one 
the main room was fun too, but it's so big. It's like 300, 350. It's very much a kind of Vegas style. Here it is. Super polished set you have to do. Where the original room is maybe 150, uh, 180. It's, it, you can be a little more jazzy. You can like write, write a little more in there. You can think of a tag and then it gets some laughs. Mm -hmm. What yeah. slot do you like to go at the most? <clears throat> you mean time slot? Mm -hmm. Middle's pretty good. M middle of the lineup is not bad. Um, but every 15 minutes is a different show because there's no MC and it goes on for quite a while. I remember when, when you first get past, you're a runt and they put you up at the very, very end. So you're going up at 1.30, mm -hmm. you're going up at 1.45, just so late. They're so tired. There's six people in the crowd. 10 people they're trying to sober up it's an empty room pretty much but it you get good at being present and connecting with people and you can't just rely on jokes like if there, if you have a packed room you can just go into jokes and it's fine because there's a social contract between comedian and audience mm -hmm. but if there's five people in the crowd and you're like uh i was talking to my brother today yeah <laughs> it's just it just reeks of artifice so it teaches you to be real mm -hmm. and connect before jokes. So, and then you take a little of those lessons from the late night comedy store and you apply it to a packed house. It's super powerful. So I'm so grateful that I had to do that for a couple of years, just perform for five people mm -hmm. at 1 a.m. Yeah, yeah, because you get good at being a real human. And then when you inject jokes into that, it's just like super powerful. It's the full list of It's, yeah. What up? what up what's up dude how's it going boys <laughs> doing well you got chad jt and fahim amwar uh, let's go <laughs> what ails you brother okay I'm, I'm gonna be a little vulnerable with you boys okay mm -hmm. so you know i'm stoked to go to the sun club this weekend right like without a doubt gotta show up break the world record has to be part of the movement but i'm a little nervous about you know dropping the undies and exposing my sphincter to the world because there's there's going to be a, a potentially a million people there mm -hmm. i like i don't know if i can handle that you don't feel comfort in there being so many other sphincters there that people aren't going to be able to focus on yours you know i think that I think that I'm just a little worried that the Guinness World Record guy is going to, like, take a little too long counting mine. You know, he's going to lose count and have to come back to mine because I'm the first one he sees. I'm just worried about any possibility that my sphincter gets some special attention. Mm. I would say this, dude. Nervousness is contagious. But so is courage. Mm. And when you're around mm. all those other brave souls that are looking for a healthier earth and willing to fight for it and willing to bear their soul and sphincter for it, you're going to get carried by that energy and your pants are going to fly right off. That's a good point. Yeah, it's, it's called group B-hole think. Um, when you're all shown at the same time, you become one mind. It's a hive mind. It's, you become yeah. one. It's almost like a gazelle. The buttholes <clears throat> a gazelle being lost amongst the pack of gazelles. And the lion can't zero in on one butthole. There's too many of them. Right. Yeah, if you, looked, the if you looked at 60 buttholes, how would you pick which one Whoa. you ran towards? Unless you got a really weird butthole. But I imagine it's pretty standard. There's not much deviation. I mean, as far as I know, yeah. Well, that's another good thing is you do find out how you stack up against other buttholes. I think most of us are stacking up well. I've never seen a butthole I didn't like. And then also you have friendly people there who can check if you have a polyp or mm. anything that needs mm. investigation. Oh yeah, we're gonna have a proctologist on hand. Really? That'd be great. Yeah, he's gonna- For real? Yeah, yeah. Cause there's so much stigma around just that part of the body, especially in men, that I think it's so important, man, that for you to even have this anxiety, it speaks to what a lot of people are feeling, that we don't feel safe when our buttholes are out. And that's not fair to us. And that's not fair to the kids we're gonna raise. So we need you out there to just bring light to your butthole and to this issue. Holy shit. That's like an I have a dream speech. That was like amazing. Uh, Clip it. That was not inspiring. I just, I don't know, man. I care. Dude, you need a fucking mic at the event and say that. <laughs> Get a podium? You guys got a, you need a podium for sure. I have a butthole. <laughs> 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 I 
can, can we make sure that quote gets included in the world record write up? I have a butt. We need that whole speech. Mm-hmm. You have a butthole, friend. I have a butthole. Wow. Well, you know, I think yeah, play it by ear. When you get there, just 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 show up and see how you feel. There's allies. Yeah. Yeah, and it's black speech, so you'll see a bunch of old dudes with their hogs out, and you'll feel right yeah, at not home. Not super stoked about that part, but but I'll be stoked to be with the Stokers. Yeah, for sure. I think also, yeah. Once you get into the when in Rome, show butthole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you might have FOMO, right? Because if you have the pants on, you're like, I got to be a part of this. This is bigger than me. Yeah. This is bigger than my butthole. Yeah. You know, honestly, I'm more worried about the opposite effect. I'm worried about the downstream. Uh, repercussion that you can't stop pulling out your butthole and you go full butthole prison experiment and you start yanking other dudes shorts down making them show hole even when it's not a pro pro or where it's not the space for it so that's the thing you gotta keep caged hmm. keep it legal. You know, I've, I've done some stunning this week more this week to prep but I haven't done it with a squad so mm. I do have to make sure it doesn't consume me hmm the group will keep you safe. Good to know. Love you. I love you even more, GT. Oh, I gotta say, boys, I was at your, your locals only show this week. Mm-hmm. You guys crushed it. Oh, and thanks. tell Joe and Shida they crushed it too. We will. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming. You're a legend. Oh, my pleasure. Dude, I was front row laughing at all the jokes because they were all hitting. Oh, dude, were you awesome. were you on the, let's say you're on the stage, were you on the left-hand side? Yeah, with the hair. Oh, oh, I'm, I know who you are. Oh, that's dude, awesome. What a little piece together like that. Yeah. I remember you. I remember looking at you and thinking, I'd like to see that dude's butthole one day. <laughs> and for that day to be this Sunday, bro, <laughs> sometimes life just works out the way you want it to. Not only did he think that, he said that to me in the green room. I couldn't stop talking about you. Well, glad all your dreams will come true this Sunday, then. <laughs> That's why I see Club. Be there. Num, num, num. Awesome. Well, thanks for calling in. Later, man. Peace. Of course. Peace out. Great guy. Yeah, we got an event this Sunday. We're doing the largest uh, group perineum sunning. Man, event. is it going to be a million people for real? <laughs> oh, the million butthole. I don't want to say march, but you're not marching, right? You're yeah. just... If we get you there, we oh, might man. be good. The million they butthole. Go, Special huh? celebrity butthole. People are like, who? <laughs> I'm like, I know you guys. Are, you can't believe I'm actually here. <laughs> I take my pants off. <laughs> oh, and then the doctor immediately, immediately is like, you should get that checked out. Like, what? <laughs> You're going to die. You just go out with no pants on. Yeah. Dude, I, I, want- I do a reverse Burt Kreischer. I just show up, no pants. <laughs> That's really, what? how come no one's done that yet? Because <laughs> it's illegal. <laughs> A reverse Bert. A reverse Bert. You're doing an interview. You're just wearing no pants, no visor. You're like, who's your biggest inspirator? Like, well, Bert Kreischer kind of paved the way for yeah, a lot kind of, of. He does the top. I do the bottom. So it's like parallel thinking. Like, mine's a little, you know. People conflate us a lot. But actually, if you watch us perform, <laughs> his is way different. I have no pants. And he has no shirt. They're entirely different things. Like, you can see his nipples, but you can't see his balls. And I think that's a huge difference. That's where we differ. Uh, he, All respect he, to Bert, Yes, though. obviously. He walked so I could run. Dude, I had one more thing I wanted to check. Dude, so we were bashing. Not bashing. How would you describe it? We were kind of calling out the Montana boys. We were trying oh, to headhunt them a little bit. Yeah. Are you familiar with their work? I'm not, no. They do uh, like lip syncing to camera for TikTok. And okay. they've been all the rage lately, especially since their hottest members started dating Kristen Cavalieri of oh, wow. Hills of Laguna Beach fame. So what they do, easy to pick on. Okay. If you're a cynic. So this is the lip sync to music? So show him another version of that, Jake, so you can get an idea of the full scope. I have a lot of questions. Can I, can I just do a lightning round and you guys help me out? Yeah, sure thing. Okay. They're, they're big from lip syncing this country song? Mm-hmm. And the, hot, the hottest one is dating Kristen Cavallari. Okay. From Laguna Beach fame. Interesting. And then they're all from Montana? Yeah, but yes. they live in Tennessee. They live in Tennessee. They live in Tennessee. So they just started uploading videos of them lip syncing and, and being hot and then doing like this train thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do they do anything besides? Do we hear their voices ever? Uh, they get out of trucks sometimes. Okay. So this is interesting. Just, uh, you know, I've been in Hollywood for a very long time and 
you know, I've been doing stand up comedy for 21 years and, mm-hmm. you know, working on the craft. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you bomb for, you know, yeah, it's a lot of work. You drive these open mics and such. This is my third hour that I've done, and I still had to put it on YouTube. And, it's an incredible yeah. amount of work and It's dedication. a lot of work, yes. So you're telling me if I was ripped and good looking and just lip synced to. You're handsome. I just don't know if you're as like, creative. Yeah, <laughs> fuck. I couldn't do this, huh? You could have. You just didn't. Fuck. I mean, you could start. No, it's too late for me. Well, to get that muscle mass and just go like this. I also lot. don't know if people want to see me lip syncing into country music with as Fahim Anwar and just like looking all sultry. <laughs> and me and you. There you go like and, this. Yeah, yeah. And it just has like 23 views. But a lot of and guys. My, my page has a hundred of those videos. I'm just trying to be the Montana voice. A lot of people thought these guys couldn't do it. And then they did. They did it. Okay, so. Oh, shit. Whoa. What an effect. I take everything I said back. <laughs> Jay, can you bring up the two clips I just texted you? So, Fahim, I had your initial reaction, right? I was like, this is so silly. These guys don't do anything. Yeah. Why are they everywhere now? But then I saw these two things, and it made me question if I even know anything about culture, humanity, and just how things become popular. Isn't it interesting, though, with the advent of TikTok and the evolution of entertainment and there used to be a bar as to like what you had to do talent wise Mm -hmm. to kind of become huge. And it's getting lower as things become more and more bite sized. It's Mm -hmm. becoming lower. You almost just got to get out of bed at this point Mm -hmm. and you can be huge Mm -hmm. because even if you were gorgeous back in the day and you came to Hollywood, like in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, even early 2000s, like she's gorgeous, but you got to go to acting class. You have to just get good enough and we can put you in some films. And you don't even need to do that anymore. It's almost detrimental to like spend all that time learning how to act. It's like just be hot and lip sync. Mm. Do you have, can you do that for 10 seconds? But so here's my thing. And I'm, I'm kind of doing it just because it's fun to talk about, but also kind of, it really hit me. Like, so watch these two clips. If you make something that's so easy to make fun of and that so many people want to make fun of, that's so like quick and easy to make fun of, is that... Well, it's almost genius now because the arguing in the algorithm that is so divisive. There's going to be some people who genuinely love it. And it's it's almost like a Rorschach test or something. Like there's going to be people who love it. Like, oh my God, this guy's so hot. I love this song. You boys are killing it. Loved it. This is my favorite. Keep doing it. And there's going to be people like, what the fuck is this? Mm -hmm. The Rome is burning. What is this dog shit? Is this what we've come to? You're just hating. I love their spirit. And, and they're going to be... create something that hits that perfect intersection of those two things. Well, that gets rewarded now. Like that dialogue and just venom going on for months at a time of them fighting each other makes it 7 million views. P- pop this, Jake. So this is Sports Center host doing it. Inside, got my head in. And then watch this one. It's senior citizens. Like they've created this template that anyone can substitute themselves into and have fun pretending they're them. This is the videoification of that's what she said. Wow. TikTok, I'm swear to God, it's just the, like it's entertainment template. Like, mm. oh, we can. This is what you got to do. It's a to be entertaining. Yeah, it's Mad Libs. Like, okay, okay, you do this, this, this. You have an entertaining thing. You do this and this. This is a comedy thing. We got to have them on. We got it. <laughs> you guys got to make your own version of like maybe it's not this. Have just... have a song that you do and revisit it. Like every month you do a new version of a song and you. I don't have the it. commitment. We did Randy 30 year olds. We tried oh, and, yeah. and it was fun as a one off. But yeah. do I have the commitment, the durability, the tenacity to sink my feet in and do that every day? Yeah, that's commitment. They got there. They slogged. Like you like to come up with new jokes that have new that's, ideas in them, right? Yeah, that's my problem. I need repeatability. I need, I need, yeah, I would never dream this up. This is me and Chad. <laughs> I was just What's working song? out. A lot. I was working out a lot. You guys are ripped. Yeah. That was the whole thing. I don't think there ever was one. But what's funny about this is like, 
this is your one-off like to experiment like that's their main thing <laughs> like this is your silly one-off oh yeah get, get us some volume on this trick sounds not available TikTok block it was in sync on this one all right isn't it funny like is that when, hard for you when, to well, when you, <laughs> oh, man, yeah. especially when you oh. remove the music of course <laughs> So Chad just had a reaction because Chad was watching himself gyrate shirtless to camera. So I'm not a Montana boy. That's what I'm asking. That's something I need to reckon with and I thought I could be, but I'm not. Mm. Do you think a Montana boy would see that and just like, not, so I'm not saying you, but they're watching themselves shreds. and they'd be like, yeah, I love this. He would be like, oh, this, yeah, yeah, I love yeah, this. Yeah, he'd crush you like a peanut because he because yeah. you couldn't commit to. Yeah, he's like, there's no heart there. And He's you like, guys I don't are believe both good-looking yeah. guys who are in good shape. Like you guys could Montana if you wanted. I to want boy. him to start an acting studio and just like random shirtless dudes gyrate. And he goes, "I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe this. You're gyrating, but you're literally going through the motions. You're you need to put this into it. Watch." And he rips his shirt off. He he points to a photo of Kristen Cavallari. He's like, "You see that? I'm fucking that." <laughs> What are you fucking? <laughs> and I do it in a house that I own. <laughs> I don't rent. No they, renters fucking. They in put my up house. a BTS of their stuff, like where they work out what the order is and oh, how they're really? gonna cap it. Dude, it's is pretty... one of them wearing a turtleneck? Like it's actually very theatrical. Like, okay, then you're gonna come in here. Um, places everybody. Oh man. I'm learning so much. We've been we've been really showing them to a lot of guests because I feel like it's uh... Yeah, thanks for ruining my day. Dude, thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me. Thanks for introducing me to the Montana boys. Thanks for letting me chat with your fans. They seem really cool. cool I also dude. like how vulnerable they get with you guys. You've yeah. developed a safe space yeah. for them to be raw, like ski mask guy. Yeah, dude. I was. I think about that. Like, what would I do in that situation? And you it's, beat yourself up. It's worst case worst. scenario. Yeah. And for him to just be bringing it to us and yeah. handling it honestly and in the moment. I think before you guys developed the space, guys would just sit with that. And it would Thank be you. toxic. It would weigh on them. And, you know. Some and sometimes people... that guy's girlfriend would actually end up getting fucked as a result of that. Yes, because you manifest this Your worst, worst case reality. scenario. And then she kind of picks up on that through osmosis. And is like, I think I want him. I think he wants me to do this. Mm -hmm. So I think that's good. The relationship you got your fans. Thanks for Thanks. letting me. And she might want it to happen. Yeah, that's true. There's that too. But you got to suss that out pretty quickly, hopefully. Poor guy. I know. That's not going to happen though. I mean, so if it did. Check out the uncut version, of, the raw. Of House Money. Yeah, House Money, full special. On YouTube, Fahim Anwar. And then do you have dates? Anything? I'm doing Mothership in May. It's so late May. Check out their website. I'm doing Fat Man. That's like the bigger room there. So I'm doing two or three nights there. And I'm in town for a few months to like build the next hour. I have some of it, but I have to build more. And then maybe Mothership will be when I start to go out on the road again. You're the best, man. I have so many comedian friends who can't watch anything, and everyone agrees that you're awesome. Oh, yeah, that's that's nice. Your stuff. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm accessible, I guess. I love watching your clip. Like, like, my girlfriend and I were, we were watching them. Just it, ah, they're so good. Thanks, man. Yeah, I'm no Montana boys, but I'm good in my lane. You'll get there. I'll get there. Look, none of us are. <laughs> Yo, what if you see my next stand-up clips and I'm just like shirtless with a cowboy hat on, and I'm just lip-syncing in the country music? <laughs> And, and it's Matt. He goes, is that Madison Square Garden? <laughs> it, it, it worked? I'm like, don't It'd take my funny, word for if it. If you were just in the Montana boys, I'm just watching them go through the line and then number five is you. Yeah, then I'm pretty much the Joey Fatone of the Montana boys. Just I'm not white or handsome or ripped. And I'm just like the last guy in the train. And I, are, I just do this. I go. I disagree with a couple of those things. But I think you'd, you'd, I'd call you and you'd be like, dude, I have a huge house out in Tennessee. No shit. I'd be like, you could fuck in it if you want. <laughs> I don't have these rules. <laughs> All right, we got we to gotta, we gotta run. If you need advice, these guys are really nice. You want to know what 